Hi guys, I'm Yash A. Savani, also known as Coding Assassin, and today I have a project which I want to show you, which I've been working on over the past few days, that I hope you'll really enjoy. So, um, over the past few months, I've been getting a lot of emails requesting me to help people make a RC car, which is control, or rather hack an RC car, which is controlled by a device other than their average RC controller. I mean, yeah, pretty impressive. Two axis controllers, but um, yeah, maybe you want something better than that. So, um, so I decided to make this video to help you guys. To I've made a working prototype, and I'll be showing you how to make one. You can take this um, video as a kind of a base base um, model or prototype model, which you can build up on and make it your own personal model. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is being I'll be controlling an RC car with this PS3 DualShock 2 controller. So basically, this one is um, with this I have a slight I have slightly more degrees of freedom or slightly more degrees which I can work with. I mean, there's the two-dimensional left analog key, the two-dimensional right analog key, the buttons four plus four plus two plus two. That's almost 8 plus 4, 12 different buttons plus your L3 and R3. Not, I don't think you, and plus the combos, you'll probably have more than enough buttons you'll ever need with this PSC controller itself. So, um, before I go on and try and show you exactly what I, uh, before I go on and um, explain the gory details and the gory conundrums you'll be working with or you'll face, um, let me just show you what I've made, the basic prototype I've made. And then you'll at least know what that you're getting the bang for the buck. So all right. Um. So this is the RC car right here. And basically, what we'll be doing is running the code. Running. Uh, this is an Arduino on it. So basically, we'll be I'm um, turning this car on. Basic on switched. Um. I've hacked the car so it'll work the way which we want to. So keep this car. I'll keep this car on. Make sure you can see it. So let's keep it here. So, yeah, from here. Alright, and on the other end, I'll just run this code here. So, um, basically, this code will be taking that sensor input. So, yeah, um, but yeah, so here basically we have this working, and here's my PSD controller. So as you can see, let's go to the workings of this house. It's pretty simple. Basically, let me make sure you can see the buttons a little bit clearer. All right, here, hopefully this should be good enough. Okay, so X will make the car go forward. O makes it go backwards. This left analog key to left will make the car move. The car front wheels move left, left, sorry, and right. So if I move right X, car moves in our direction and off the screen and back and forward and as you can see it's a it's really normal it works pretty um intuitively x forward or backwards moves uh, the left analog stick moves the um wheels front wheel so the car can turn it's basically your everyday um your everyday Game control car. So if you have a car, basically, if you played, if you played um, Need for Speed or any other car racing game, you'll probably know the control already. Um. So now for now for what all you tech geeks have been waiting waiting for, the gory details. So basically, let's follow the information stream. Um. Oh, the source of the stream would start with this PSG controller. So this PSC controller is a basic six axis dual shock three PSC controller. You can see here. No kidding here. So basically this um I'm pretty sure it will work without with uh without a dual shock three, but I don't know because I only have this one, so yeah, you'll have to tell me in the comment section below. So basically um the way that this PSC controller works is it connects via Bluetooth to a, a receiver which is usually your um, PS3. However, what I've done for this um, project is, 
I've connected this PSC controller to my computer, then I'm running a code, this code right here, which uses the Pro Control library to hack this PS3 um, Bluetooth connection and use it to send data to another device or basically use it in a program, which I've written right here. So what happens then is, if I can just get the screen right, so this data is then travel, uh, it travels along this USB wire, which um, you just have to take my word for it, but it basically travels via this USB cable, which is plugged in my computer, um, and that can, at, and that the data which it receives, the program converts that data into a form of readable to um, the Arduino, which would be like FWD for forward, BKWD for backward. RGT for right and LFT for left and that is then uh, transferred via serial UART to this Arduino. This Arduino then sends data via this um, 433 megahertz, let me make sure you can see it properly, basically this is a 433 megahertz um, transmitter module. Um, it sends that data across to the 433 megahertz receiver module right here, which then transfers the data to this Arduino right here. So basically you have two Arduinos, one at the base station, which base, send, base sender, which sends this data across, gets the data via serial UART, and then sends that data across to this Arduino, which is my Duino now, which then, um, which then toggles these analog switches here, which um, in turn power the different parts of the car which make it go forward, backward, left and right and whatever. So um, basically what happens in the car is, how I did this was, this car it was a normal RC car when I bought it, it wasn't like this with this, these wires hanging out and everything, the proper RC car. It took me over a night, I went and I disassembled the car and when I opened this whole thing up, there was a PCB, a small circuit board there, which basically handled all the transmission and all the conversion from RF data to uh, radio frequency data to the electronic signals which, which was moving the car. So what I've done is I I I then use my trusty multimeter and I probed around in the circuit until I found a PCB uh, uh, until I found an integrated circuit or a chip which basically was the heart of the board. Now on that chip were four pins, two pi one pin for going forward, one pin for going backward, one for moving the car, one for moving the front wheels left and one for moving the front wheels right. And basically to each of those points I soldered these wires which you see coming out of the car right here or the body of the car right here and when they and then these wires I then plug into the Arduino. So basically, these wires inside are um, soldered Six. to a PCB. Sorry, are soldered to a PCB quite like this, and then they come out and they connect to this Arduino, which can toggle them on and off and use that to control my RC car. So basically, what I've done is. I went in and hacked the car so it can be controlled by an Arduino. Now, for my project, I've used a PSC controller. I know this might not have been the best way to use it. After all, I could have just directly transferred this blue the Bluetooth connection from here to the Arduino. However, in this, I got to use a multitude of ways um, to transfer data. So, from the blue from the PSC to my computer to another Arduino, back to the Arduino. So, I've used the Bluetooth connection of the PS3 to the computer, the UART connection from the serial UART connection from the computer to the um, Arduino at the base station, this one, and um, the radio frequency transmission from the um, from from the Arduino at the base station to the Arduino on my RC car. So um, basically, this was really complex and maybe slightly Byzantine way of doing it. However, um, this allows for you who probably want to do it in a simpler way to take advantage of this and put your own, put your whatever else you want in the middle. So for instance, if instead of having 
my having a PSG controller here, you could easily use um a Xbox 360 controller, which would which would you, you can use you can use the Pro Control library to um, hack into the um feed from the Xbox 360 controller directly. So instead of using um a PSG controller, Xbox 360, for instance, then on the other hand, you could have a sensor directly connected to this Arduino here which would then send the data directly to the car. So for instance, if you had, for instance, a glove, like a pseudo glove or something, where you can, where the um, accelerometers and sensors on the glove make, um, like they encode basic um, movements, like probably if you close your hand, it goes forward, if you release it, it stops, whatever. All of that would be then connected to the Arduino, which would send that data across to the car, and or on the other hand, the car itself directly using the Arduino, whatever pre-programmed controls you have on the Arduino. For instance, if you, have a, if you have a touch sensor on the Arduino, if you have a ultrasonic sensor on the Arduino, you could have the Arduino, or you could have the Arduino on the car completely autonomous. So that's all for you. You can do everything, anything you want with it. Basically, this allows you a multiple points at which you could edit. So you can actually go ahead and make it your own or try to do whatever you want with it. I encourage you to do so. In fact, um, you, to do so, I've made um, a website which you'll see right here. Not a website, but it's like I hosted all of the code online at code.google. So um, all of it can be found here. And um, if you have any problems, don't hesitate to uh, contact me. If you can contact me at codingassassin at gmail.com. So um, I hope to hear from you. Hope you can make the best out of this. Um, thank you for watching.